Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing every single episode of Family Guy Season 1. Dick, you ever wonder what's outside those walls? Say now, that's dangerous thinking, Paul. You best stick to your work. <laughs> okay. Death has a shadow. This episode is about Pete Griffin getting fired from his job at a toy company for negligence. He fell asleep at the job, and while he was napping, tons of violent and not age-appropriate stuff starts getting sent out to kids. Such as a bunch of pills, which is so messed up, I couldn't help but laugh. And when he gets fired, he struggles to tell his wife, Lois, he doesn't have a job anymore. So to save money, he tells Lois that she should stop eating as much food because she's getting fat. Which is something you should never say to a woman. And Brian hits Pete over the head with a newspaper for doing that, which was pretty funny. Then Peter gets told to think of the welfare of his family, so he signs up for welfare checks. But uh-oh, he begins getting paid way more than necessary, and starts to spend money like he's a famous football player. Speaking of football, Lois finds out about the welfare thing and gets mad at him for lying to her about where he's been getting all the money. So Pete and Brian fly a blimp over a football stadium and throw all the money out of the blimp to make Lois feel happy. They both get sent to prison, there's a trial, and Peter wins the case due to mind control. Not a bad first episode, if I do say so myself. The humor is very funny, and the timing of the jokes is perfect. Before you can even think of what the punchline is gonna be, it already happens, so it's pretty fast-paced, which is the kind of humor I like. Almost every joke landed, the soap one was kind of predictable, and I did roll my eyes at the gas joke. But this episode has a lot of jokes, so even if some of them do miss, most of them don't. The episode also does a good job at establishing the main characters and what their personalities are like. Pete is a well-meaning idiot. Stewie is an evil child who is constantly scheming but never actually succeeding at anything significant, and always being seen as nothing more than a baby. Brian is intelligent and speaks English, etc. Though halfway into the episode, I had to check to see if I was watching the correct episode, because I was confused by the title, Death Has a Shadow, and I was waiting for the Grim Reaper to show up or something. Apparently, it was a naming gimmick where they were gonna name each episode after death and reference death in each episode, but they didn't actually end up doing that. Either that, or it was Seth MacFarlane's way of threatening people to keep his show on air, which I would prefer to think of as the actual reason because it's pretty funny. I give this episode a 3 out of 3, which means it is a good episode. I never met the dead man. In this episode, Meg is trying to get her driving license. Peter wants to watch TV because he has a cable addiction, but has to take Meg out of the house to try to teach her how to drive. But the advice he gives her is terrible and when she goes to take the test, she gets pulled over by a cop and fails. And on the way back home, Peter gets into an accident that causes every television in town to go out. This causes Peter to have to cope with not having cable, and he loses his mind a bit. Meanwhile, Stewie battles against Broccoli, because he hates it. So the first thing you'll notice is this episode takes place in a time in the distant past, before Netflix and Disney+, Plus, where people actually had to watch programs on a box that they'd put on a table. The second thing you'll notice is this episode goes all in on the cutaway gags, and a lot of them are funny. My favorite cutaway gag was the parody of Scooby-Doo. Did you know they actually got Frank Rocco, who plays Fred and Scooby in Scooby-Doo? Yes, that's him in the cutaway gag, which makes it a lot funnier. Gee whiz, gang. Looks like the killer gutted the victim, strangled him with his own intestines, and then dumped the body in the river. Jinkies, what a mystery. <laughs> You're right, Scoob. We're dealing with one sick son of a bitch. Crazy how the movie Scoob and the Velma spinoff couldn't get the original cast of the series to play their characters, but Family Guy was able to get the voice of Fred in just the second episode of season one. But that's a topic for a different video. My favorite part of the episode would have to be when Peter is trying to cope with TV being gone, so he starts walking around in public with a television frame being held in front of him as he narrates everything he sees as if he's flipping through a bunch of channels, being like, oh, so this is on TV. The climax of this episode really got me. I thought they were just gonna have a lazy ending when they said, oh, this is when someone shows up to give a speech that convinces the main character to go back to their old ways, and then some Hollywood actor showed up. I don't follow celebrities. But no, the episode kept going, instead of taking the easy way out. They had Peter and the Hollywood guy go on a trip, and some stuff happens, and Peter gets run over, 
was sent to a hospital, and goes back to loving TV while in a hospital bed and not being able to turn off the TV that's in front of him. And I think one thing this episode does a lot better than episode 1 is the Stewie Griffin stuff. It kinda overlapped with the actual story in episode 1, and some of what made it funny in episode was how unexpected it was when, say, a chair broke, and then you see Stewie being like, Dang it. But at the same time, I think the Stewie stuff works better as a more detached subplot that's a lot more in the background than it was in episode 1. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, another one of my favorite parts of the episode is when the news reporters think that no one can see the news at all, and so they're just going completely off the rails with the stuff that they're saying, but little do they realize that some people elsewhere in the world actually can hear what they're saying. I just thought that was really funny. And this is a very good episode. I give it a 3 out out of three. Chitty Chitty Death Thing. So, in this episode, Stewie is officially turning one year old. So, Lois is planning a big birthday party for Stewie. But when she sends Pedro to pay the celebration company the money, he messes it up. And it's up to him to figure out some way to save the birthday party. Meanwhile, knowing his parents are planning something, Stewie has a flashback of when he came out of Lois' room. He thinks the man in white who took him out of the the room is coming back to send him back into the room, so he tries to figure out a plan of action. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Meg tries to make a friend at school and accidentally joins a cult. This episode isn't a bad episode, but it isn't very good. I mean, there's quite a bit of good jokes in the episode, but even still, the episode isn't as funny as the two that came before it. The whole section of the episode about Meg trying to find friends and being taken in by a cult was odd, but it wasn't as interesting as the other stuff going on in the episode. It just felt kind of tacked on. Like, they finished making the episodes, but it wasn't long enough, so they were like, hey, let's have a subplot about Meg in this episode. And let's not really go anywhere with the concept about a cult. Yeah, the man in charge of the cult follows Meg back home and gets killed by Stewie, which pretty much wraps up the Stewie plot in the episode, but that could have been anyone who Stewie fought in in the house, and it wouldn't have made any difference. It could have been someone from the carnival, and not to get political in this video, but the episode also has that stupid joke about Republicans that wasn't funny and was very unnecessary. Start the party, <laughs> I hope. Hey Lois, look! The two symbols of the Republican Party, an elephant and a big fat white guy who's threatened by change. There was also the flashback of Stewie being in Lois's room, and there were all the visuals of Spome, and the whole thing was just gross. Honestly, I would consider this a bad episode if it wasn't for the scenes of Peter trying to fix everything to make Lois happy, and him realizing a celebration isn't about Stewie, it's about his wife. It's kinda nice. And there were some funny moments in there with Peter too. I give this episode a 2 out of 3, meaning it is a mid-episode. Mind over Modo. In this episode, Pedo gets drunk at a football game and punches a woman who he thought was a man. So he gets put on house arrest and can't leave the house to hang out with the guys. So, to get his friends to spend time with him, he goes in the basement and builds a bow- a bow- a you know what I mean. And the bow becomes very successful. Lois ends up singing and playing piano for the people there, and Peter gets mad about how everyone in the crowd keeps looking at Lois. Meanwhile, Stewie tries to make a time machine to travel to the future because in the present, he is teething. This episode, what do I even say about it? I like how it introduced Cleveland and Cragmire, even though Cragmire was in episode 1, just as a cameo though. And the episode had some funny moments, especially the scene where Pito and Lois are going shopping, and some guy says Lois has nice melons, making Pito mad, but Lois is actually holding watermelons. Then the guy says, by the way, your wife is hot. I don't know though, this episode isn't very funny, and it's pretty boring. When Pito gets put on house arrest, it starts to feel like nothing is happening in the episode, and then when stuff does happen, the episode just becomes an animated soap opera. And it's not like a funny parody of one, it felt like I was reading a bad fanfic. And of course, there's a cop-out ending where everything that happens in the episode is undone by Stewie using a time machine. The more I try to think about what happened in this episode, the more it 
feels like I blacked out or something. Seriously, I was bowled out of my mind while watching this episode. I guess this episode is gonna be the first one out of three in my Family Guy reviews, which means it is a bad episode. I would rather watch the flashback of Stewie being inside Lois's room than watch this episode again, because even though it was pretty gross, at least it held my attention. A hero sits next though. In this episode, Peter must find a replacement for his baseball team. Joe Swanson moves into the neighborhood, and Peter automatically doesn't like him. But when he sees the baseball trophies Joe has, Peter has him join the team. On the day of the game though, Peter finds out Joe is handicapped. But even though he's in a wheelchair, Joe kicks butt on the team, and everyone begins to like him. Everyone except for Peter. Peter is ableist, and can't get over the fact that a guy in a wheelchair is basically becoming seen as a hero. We find out Joe is a cop, and Peter tries to stop a bank robbery to become seen as heroic as Joe. Joe saves the day, and Peter stops being jealous of him, because Joe Swanson is a good guy. This episode has a very good message. You shouldn't ever discriminate against people for having a disability. It doesn't mean they're any less than you. And the way this episode goes about telling this message was excellent. It didn't feel too preachy like I was watching a PSA, and this episode still feels like a typical Family Guy episode, with some good gags. But my favorite part of the episode would have to be the flashback of how Joe lost his legs while saving a kid's Christmas. This was a satisfying viewing experience after the last couple disappointing episodes. I give this episode a 3 out of 3. The Sun also draws. In this episode, Chris Griffin messes up at a Big Scouts event and has to do something soon to get a badge if he wants to stay in the Scouts. But Chris doesn't want to stay in the Scouts. Peter wants him to. So the Griffins go on a family trip to have Chris experience something that will get him a badge. They get sidetracked though at an Indian casino because Peter has to use the bathroom. While he's taking care of business, Lois gets carried away with gambling and bets the family's vehicle and loses it. I love how much this episode spirals into insanity. It goes from Chris being kicked out of the scouts to him and Peter having a spiritual vision in some woods. I wasn't expecting out of trees to catch on fire. Talk about an environmental episode. It was pretty unexpected in a funny way. This episode had a lot of funny moments. Brian chilling at home, Peter acting like he's an Indian too, making up a completely baloney stuff. The signs Peter sees when trying to drive. The ending where he says Canada sucks. No offense Canadians. The previous episode which introduced Joe Swanson was amazing, but this is the funniest episode in the show since the second episode. Though, if I do have one complaint, it would be the solution to the episode where Peter says he likes Chris's drawings made me kinda zone out for a second. It isn't a bad solution to the episode, but having the joke where Peter insults it right before he says he likes it makes him saying he likes the drawings feel like a waste of time and meaningless. If they got rid of that one joke, it would have been much better. Still though, this is a great episode. I give it a 3 out of 3. Brian, Portrait of a Dog. This is a very Brian-centric episode, believe it or not, in case the title didn't already make it obvious. It's about Peter and Brian's relationship, as they get mad at each other and fight, then by the climax of the episode, they become friends again. Despite being a character drama type episode, the humor of the series is still there. They get a lot of gags out of Brian being a dog, but also being a very sophisticated one and being kinda like a human. Brian sees Lady and the Tramp and criticizes them for being stereotypical good dogs. Wait, why am I just finding out Disney made a live action Lady and the Tramp movie in 2019? That's an awful idea. Anyways though, another highlight of this episode is the cutaway gag in the style of a classic tune. Another thing about this episode is the opening gag where the Griffins are watching a TV show where a man a woman is a pretty smooth transition to the opening theme of the series that goes It seems today that all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV Though in this case, violence is on the TV, not sex. It's kind of fitting that the first episode and the final episode of season 1 ends with a trial. I wonder if that was an intentional way of kind of bookending the season, or if it was just a coincidence. This episode is a 3 out of 3. I'm happy they ended season 1 on a positive note. Well, that's it for season 1. Season 1 is actually kind of surprisingly short, only has 7 episodes. I am not sure if season 2 is going to have the same amount or if it's going to
gonna be mo episodes. I didn't check to see how many episodes this season was gonna have before I started making this video, so I'm kinda surprised it is only 7 episodes. So, after watching this season, I found out that this season has 1 episode that would be a 2 out of 3, 1 episode that would be a 1 out of 3, meaning it's a bad episode, and the rest of the episodes in the season are 3 out of 3s. Which means, overall, this season has more good episodes than bad. So that's a pretty good beginning of this series. I can definitely see why Family Guy became so popular. Almost every episode in this season does hold up and is actually good. It may not be peak cinema television or whatever, but at its best, it is a very, very funny adult comedy series. Is the animation very good? Eh, I mean, not really, but it's not really what it's about. It's about being funny. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video guys. What do you think of Family Guy Season 1? If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. The next challenge of mine is gonna be reviewing every episode in Season 2. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned. Let's go!